queuing up for the uh, transport museum with the family. Like to see. Play with chainsaws. <clears throat> so, for the finale That's of my go. show, I'm gonna get on this unicycle here. Check it out. One, two, three. Hop! Hoo! 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 I said it's not as easy as it looks. Oh. Just, just out of curiosity, has anyone here got a sense of humour? Or am I barking up the wrong tree? Okay. It were. And for the finale of the show, I will get on the unicycle here. I will cycle it around the stage. If that goes well, I will then juggle the clubs. However, as I was saying, that's the finale. The finale comes at the end. I haven't started yet. Hey everybody. It's the 20th of October 2016. I'm uh, back indoors after our little um, day out at Covent Gardens. Um, I didn't take uh, very much uh, video as you can see, just a couple of minutes here and there, nothing major. Um, it wasn't really a day for um, video, tabakiana videoing. It was more to spend time with the kids so I tried to keep off the phone as much as possible. Um, <coughs> I did uh, smoke this pipe on the way though but I have to say it wasn't really working for me outdoors because I think a bent pipe works better um, it just holds and sits better and this one has got quite a thick uh, bit and not easy to clench so I'm even thinking of sending it back and getting him to uh, I might do it myself even but uh, just to make that a bit thinner but um, aside from that it smokes very very well. Um, I will have been smoking some uh, Bob's chocolate. Anyway, um, so I wanted to show you what, a couple of bits that I bought there. Nothing major, really nothing major. And the package which has arrived. This ought to be um, from the Danish pipe shop. Christopher Smedley. Stunning knife. If you're in the market for a knife, you can do a lot worse than one of his knives. Extremely sharp. So that was the first thing, it was um, Beginner's Luck, it's their, uh, another of their collaborations with Samuel Gowth, I think, yep, Samuel Gowth, and a pipe shop. The other one is Brown Sugar Flake, which I've, I don't think it's going to be my kind of thing, um, but this one is a little bit, um, um, it's a loose cut mixture with Virginia, Cavendish, Burley, Whiskey and Vanilla, so it's a bit of a aromatic, it's probably going to be very similar to... Um, various uh, other things and it may well be similar to something on the Samuel Garth range which uh, I'd have to check out but this kind of falls into my exploration of British tobaccos kind of so that's I bought two pipes pipe number one is a Dagna Cobb, which um, I've been meaning to get for a while, but um, it's not something I would have ordered on its own. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have been worth the postage to order it from Denmark.
It's a nice little cob. It's a sitter. And um, it's a convenient uh, cob, I should say. Um, I would say that it's um, a nice one to have around when you're working. You just set it down whenever you like. It's lightweight. The bit is... I prefer a little bit of a thinner bit so you can get it, you're not having to uh, keep your teeth too far apart to clench on it. The draw, not as wide as it could be, but you know what, for a cub, for the money, fantastic. It's a good looker, a little bit of a band. I love that uh, darkened sort of colouring there on the bowl. Really nice, I'm looking forward to smoking that. I shall probably have an English in it, a Balkan blend. <clears throat> I may well save that for the special reserve um, Seattle Pipe Club uh, plum pudding, maybe. Yes, I got myself another Refberg, Soren Refberg handmade pipes in Denmark. The main reason I went for this was that square shank. I'm a sucker for something different, but something functional and smokable. And Soren Refberg pipes are eminently smokable, really lightweight. I can see this is going to be a regular smoker of mine. It really falls within the parameters that I go for nowadays, which is something light. Um, well made, well finished, I'm quite finicky when it comes to finish um, and, and it's got something quirky about it and that's the square shank there and I know Soren Refberg's um, stuff, this is my fourth pipe of his um, it's got a smooth top which a lot of his pipes don't have um, this rustication is classical Refberg rustication it's a, a black dark rustication with some maroon purple showing through and I really like that um, if I can lay my hands on my other one, I will show it to you. Um, well, I can't lay my hands on it at this precise moment, the, the rusticated one, but this is the one I, you see quite often on my car journeys. This is a smooth bent billiard, fantastic pipe, smokes very, very well. Um, so, there we have it. It's a lightweight pipe, I think it was around, um, I have, I'm not going to bother getting my scales out right now, but really nice comfortable stems. I like the way that it fans out a little bit, so it's a bit narrower there and gets a bit wider at the tip. And I just love this square shank, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean it has the same kind of um, attraction as a diamond shaped shank. It's just something different, it's got some nice sort of edge to grab onto. And it's got a nice little bit of a bend in there, which is going to make it a real comfortable clencher. If it would have been a heavy bowl, it would have been uncomfortable because um, the center of gravity would not have been good because it would have pulled down. And you'd, then you'd really want a, a full bend. But because it's lightweight and there's a little bit of a bend on there, this will be a very comfortable smoker. I can tell that straight away. Good draw. Uh, let me just have a look at the drill on that. The drill, on this particular occasion, is not spot on, is not bang centre. But that's no issue because this is far enough away from the drill hole, so it should be absolutely fine. I do find that his, the fit between the stem and shank his are quite loose. I mean, they're not loose, but they are not really, really, you know, tight. So over time, they do loosen, and I do have to uh, play around with them a little bit. And what I end up having to do usually is just heating that up and just going onto a surface and just pushing it down a little bit so it spreads. Um, and that um, you have to be very careful when you do that because you can ruin the tenon. Um, you got to take it really slow, pigeon steps, but it works. I've done quite a few pipes that way. Um, and it works. In fact, I think I had to do this one. This is the other Soren. 
So it's really nice and snug now. I can't even get it out. But in reality, no, you know what? I'm not even going to take it out. But it's really only the tip of it which is spread like a mushroom. The rest of it is still loose, but it holds because of that uh, bit at the end of the tenon. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to do. We had a nice day out. Oh, I forgot. I just wanted to show you um, what I bought in uh, Cigar and Snap. So what I bought in one of the stalls in the market was a new beanie, because I've lost my last one. That was size for that. Cigar and Snap. Mullins and Wesley, that's the the blend, the blender, um, all of their tobaccos which they sell in the shop are by Mullins and Wesley. They don't sell any tin tobacco, they sell it all out of traditional jars. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, Mullins and Wesley could be just a front name, it, it could be bought in bulk, I don't know. It's very possible, I'm not entirely sure. You get a set of matches. So the first thing I bought was some snuff. Um, this is mature crumbled snuff. It's called. He's got a range of I don't know, maybe eight or ten different snuffs there. Um, and what I asked him was for one which is sort of fairly dry, um, not too mental, and and has a more of a cigar Maduro kind of uh, beefiness to it. Um, the one I'm using at the moment. I'm not a huge snuff uh, uh, snorter, if you like. Um, the, one, the other one I've got, I bought in the Danish pipe shop about uh, maybe a year ago, and it's really good. And it's got that, although it's got the menthol, it's also got that little bit of a um, cigar earthy earthiness to it. And this is the other one I've got as well. This is uh, bought recently from, uh, I don't remember, Black Swan, I think it is, which is a UK on, uh, online tobacconist. It's, it's quite nice, but it's pretty run-of-the-mill. It's a menthol... Um, snuff and it's just a, a bare, bare basics um, snuff. You know what, I'm actually going to open this up and just give it a quick whiff. I don't know what um, crumbled snuff means, I've not come across that term before. It's, it's a normal snuff texture. And this is very interesting. It's almost got like a lemony, licorice kind of aroma to it. That is interesting. Okay, perhaps I'll do a little review of that in the future. Okay, so we've got a couple of cigars. Nothing major. That's it. Just two cigars. I must be honest, I do find it hard to buy Cubans or any part, any any cigars now in retail because I, I really am getting decent deals from America on the South American ones which I tend to prefer and um, and this I have and has, has worked out okay as well so okay but there you have to buy in bulk so this is just one this is a Por Laranaga exclusive Grand, uh, Great Britain, I think it's a 2014. And um, it's got a very nice aroma. This is uh, like a, a Toro size uh, with a decent girth. It's probably a little bit, it's probably a 54 or something like that. And then I bought um, a Grand Cano, a Flor de Cano. I've had one of these. And I absolutely loved it. So that's what we got. We put them side by side. The the Paul Aronagas actually does look quite a bit bigger. Um, it's got a good half inch on the uh, Icano. The girth is also bigger. I didn't realize this. Aronagas is uh, a really hefty cigar. So we'll have to keep that for a special occasion. Okay, I hope uh, you've enjoyed seeing those acquisitions and uh, seeing uh, a little bit of Covent Gardens, even though it was only a little bit. And I will catch you guys on the next one. And by the way, James Pottsville Piper, 
Uh, he sent me a message earlier that he was very close, very close to pulling the trigger on that grizzly, and he didn't. So, well done, mate. Keep it up. Do not give in. Sorry, my finger's a little bit cocoa-y from my coffee. Have a good one. Catch you on the next one.